Good morning, and everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today for our Dion Leadership Monthly Webinar Series. Today, we are talking about the topic Leadership Agility, and I have two of my colleagues here with me today, Steve Dion and Terry Shell. Thank you, Lauren, and thanks for joining me on the webinar today, Terry. Glad to be here, Steve. Uh, for those of you that are new to this webinar series or format, we try to bring thought leadership topics to the table that are new, innovative, and interesting. And this is one that we have developed ourselves, and we have a point of view now on the topic of leadership agility. You know, we believe that it's a critical skill that leaders lead, need now. We've been spending a fair amount of time trying to understand what this means and looks like in the marketplace from an academic point of view. And Terry has done a lot of research to create a model that we think is really practical. And we're excited to share that with you today and also to provide you with an ebook. Uh, but before uh, we get going and I turn the stage over to Terry, I wanted to, to just briefly intro introduce Dion Leadership for those of you that don't know um, who we are and what this looks like um, in terms of our kind of business platform. So we're really grounded with this um, kind of premise that every employee should be able to start every day excited and end every day accomplished. So we're motivated to create conditions where that happens. And that really turns into leadership and culture and other programs around the conditions where people can drive in every day and just go, I want to be here, do this, do some good work and leave every day saying, I nailed it, I feel good. And at the end of the day, businesses are better businesses in doing that. And so we do that work in a variety of spaces. And today our content or our topic is going to be uh, really structured around like management training courses and leadership development courses. And that's what this where this kind of work resides. And then some of the clients that inform our um, content today are on the screen here. So we work with a lot of large global, pretty complex organizations. And part of what prompted us to dig deeper in this space of leadership agility is working with these organizations and understanding some of the struggles that they have in responding to the pandemic and all the things that have happened since then and why uh, they need to be more agile as an organization. So specifically, what we're going to be covering today is we're going to unpack the concept of leadership agility and why we think it's important in today's environment. So we're gonna dig a little bit deeper than what I just said. Then we're gonna share some specific research um, that Terry has spent a fair amount of time um, scouring academic journals, practical leaders, other thought leaders, and, and kind of lay the platform with that. And then offer to you an easy to use model that can help leaders be more agile. And then, We'll follow it up um, in uh, email after the program. We'll send you the ebook that we've created that goes along with this and follows along with a lot of great questions you could use and ask as kind of a tool as a lead behind as well. So with that set up, Terry, can you give us a little bit of thoughts to start on why leadership agility matters? Um, thanks, Steve. Um, that was a great introduction. and. Uh, we we hear the word agile and agility a lot from our clients, which got us thinking about um, what this means and how we can support our clients in this effort. And, it, and by figuring out truly what does it means, and it's certainly not news to anyone um, that we live in a time of a lot of disruption and uncertainty and changes happening all the time. Uh, with technology and markets and competition um, and our customer demands are shifting very, very quickly. Organizations and individuals need to be flexible and adaptable um, in order to, to step up for that. So we find that leaders are constantly being faced with challenges and problems they've literally never faced before. And if they can't step up, those problems will escalate. Um, they'll put initiatives at risk, they frustrate their colleagues, and the organization um, struggles as a result. So um, actually, a few years ago, a survey by Forbes, Forbes Insights found that 81% of executives consider agility to be the most important characteristic 
of a successful organization. And the survey also found that agile organizations are faster to market and faster to innovate, and they see um, better non-financial results. So all of that culminates into an immediate and ongoing demand for this type of learning and this type of flexibility among leaders today. So traditional organizations, as we can see on the left side of this screen, are pretty static, are siloed, hierarchical. Those are things I think we read about in books of days of the past, but those aren't today's organizations. They're not slow moving. I'm sure your organization is not. You're not linear in control. You're not, um, you know, shareholder centric, I think even. So years ago, we used to talk about change management, right? And 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 how does an, a traditional organization kind of manage change? What we're seeing now is organizations requiring to move from just being change hardy or maybe not change resistant to being more agile or really choosing to be adaptable, to be reconfigurable, uh, to you know, make decisions quickly. AI has come in with a vengeance in this last year around, you know, uh, taking over how we're going to start to make decisions in organizations. And, you know, I know for me personally, probably 20, 25 years ago, we started to use this term agile from a process methodology point of view. So organizations have been saying we need to be more nimble in our decision making, but we believe that it's moved from a process orientation need to a culture and a people need. So let's talk a little bit more about what that means to, um, in terms of what is uh, agility from a leader perspective. So I'd like to ask you to throw into the chat, um, as you think about, for a leader, what do you think agility means in terms of behaviors, mindsets, you know, outcomes, you know, want to get a little bit of participation with you up front here. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about this model. And then I'm going to have some polls for you later on as well. So if you could throw in either the chat or into the uh, Q&A, um, what do you think leadership uh, ag agility means from a leadership perspective? So Terry, we are seeing the word change. So open, open to change. Um, Flexible. Be, Flexible, adaptable, open rather than argumentative. Okay. Uh, I like the terms change readiness, not only being um, willing to change, but anticipating it. I think that's- Curious, able to pivot, effective. Okay. Being prepared to pivot when circumstances change. So some of the things I'm seeing in this, and I think from a mindset of change management, it's somebody getting an experience and then saying, I can roll with that, or I'm not going to cause a stink with that. I want to go, we want to go through what we think agility means from the research in terms of true leadership agility from a benchmarking point of view here. And maybe we come back later to see what uh, if these comments seem to hold true, or if maybe by the end of this, your own definition might be a little bit evolved from hearing what we have to talk about today. No, I appreciate these notes. Uh, a few more, curious, effective, doesn't drag things out. Great. Okay, let's get into um, what is leadership agility? So our amalgamated uh, definition that um, we've settled on um, through all the work that we've done is, is that agility is the ability to act and make decisions and move the business forward when things are uncertain, when change is happening. Um, and that seems to be perpetual these days, of course, as we as we talked about. Um, it's about a, a leader's ability to manage change and conflict and the resources they have available to them in order to solve the problems that they need to solve and achieve goals that they need to achieve. And really, all leaders have been called on to demonstrate agility to some extent, um, even if they didn't call it that we're probably doing it all the time. Um, so we're talking about things like some of the words that came up already, creativity, nimbleness, and innovation and deliberate action. Um, so we're looking to, to show how leadership, leadership agility includes some important skills such as 
flexibility, adaptability, mindfulness, which we'll talk a lot about, and the ability to act with incomplete information, which is certainly something that leaders are, are called on to do all the time. But it doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean it's automatic. In fact, for many, it's really quite the opposite, which is why we're talking about it today. I saw some of these tenants uh, concepts in the chat that you guys brought up. One of the things that we are focusing on here, though, is the ability to act. You know, this is a verb here, act and make decisions. So it's it's not just do I feel good about it, but it's about doing something. And I wanted to make the point that, you know, why do we want individual leaders to be more agile? Well, it's because we want organizations to be more agile. We want them to be nimble, to make decisions quickly, to respond to, we now have to work from home in a dime. You know, we can't get product from China anymore. I mean, these global big trends, you know, uh, there's a huge strike happening you know, hypothetically speaking, not you know, uh, in Detroit here for sure. So where does um, agility come from? You know, is it culture? Is it processes? Is it technology? As I mentioned before, I think, um, you know, IT and project management people try to bring agility in from a process point of view. And sure, does it, you know, help that your culture is trying to embrace that? Yes. However, I don't think you can lead with that, that true organizational agility, and from the research, and we'll go into that next, is really coming from the people. That might sound cliche, but individual people that have an ability to behave different ways are what will create a culture, what will drive using the processes that you bring in, whether you brought in Agile and you have Scrum Masters and all the other things that you might do from a agility process point of view. But unless you have people that are choosing to be agile and not just tolerating change, but truly being able to act and make decisions in times of uncertainty, then you really can't have a true um, agile organization. So here's an opportunity for me to tell you about some of the research that really informed our, our point of view on um, leadership agility and how we want to support it and promote it within with our clients. Um, the first is an article um, from McKinsey Quarterly called Leading with Inner Agility. And I encourage you to look it up and read it. It's, it's a very cool article. And um, the article notes that just because organizations have changed their structures and adopted an agile, um, become an agile organization, um, doesn't mean that their leaders are necessarily equipped to, to function optimally in that environment. Um, there's a lot of emotional and cognitive components to that, that organizations may be overlooking. Um, and given the pace of the environment and the pressures that they're under, it's really critical for, for that to, to be addressed. Um, so if it's not, leaders tend to be rigid and react to change and disruption um, by falling back on old habits that, that really give them a feeling of stability and uh, safety um, in, in what they already know. And um, But really what's needed to handle these circumstances effectively is the opposite of that. Um, leaders need to lean into these challenges. They need to um, uh, look at these as opportunities to learn and grow and, and thrive. Um, and this is what the authors call inner agility. And they've identified these five personal practices for inner agility um, that they call these, I, I like this quote, they call them extensions of timeless principles of centered leadership that taken together can build the, the building blocks for your personal inner agility. So we're talking about things such as pausing to move faster. So it's creating space to step back and hold your judgments and come up with some original thinking. Um, it's not about doing everything as fast as possible, but it's be about um, preparing yourself to, to have the pace you need to have. Um, embracing your inner ignorance, um, knowing that you don't know everything and, and approaching situations that way. Uh, radically reframing the questions, about asking questions, under, you know, kind of back to back with what we just talked about. Um, I like the idea of setting a destination uh, or setting a direction, not a destination, um, because solutions really aren't, aren't always straightforward. And testing your solutions and yourself. Um, 
the idea of failing fast, the idea of um, thinking of yourself uh, as, as, a, as a laboratory and an experiment for the work that you're doing. Um, and they claim, the authors claim that this approach can help leaders cultivate a mindset, remember that word, um, that can help them develop and maintain agility in the workforce as things in the workplace as things come at them um, and help them organize what's going on inside their head. Another report by McKinsey, um, leading agile transformation. Um, it it carries a similar theme. It's an exam. It examines agility um, from the perspective of organizations, teams, and individual leaders. And it talks that leaders really can only transform their organizations if they have um, their mindset transformed. So we focus on that. I said, pay attention to that word. Um, it's the idea of shifting from it. it, it it illustrates different mindset from reactive to creative, from certainty to discovery, from authority to partnership, and from scarcity to abundance. And it's about um, being open, which somebody had put in the chat previously, to things you don't know, um, curious, um, creative, knowing that there's there are other things out there beyond what's just going on in your own head that will help you and equip you to deal with the circumstances and the issues and the challenges that are coming at you every day. Um, and this is a quote from, um, from that article that really resonated. Um, the idea that leadership effectiveness begins from the inside out with this purposeful, conscious examination of mindset being critical to developing your point of view, or it was critical to developing our point of view on leadership agility. And another great resource um, was a book by authors William Joyner and Stephen Josephs called Leadership Agility, Five Levels of Mastery for Anticipating and Initiating Change, which is based on their extensive research um, that they've conducted on the topic. And they describe uh, this really great word, leadership agility as a meta competency, um, one that really enhances and utilizes all of a leader's other competencies that, they, that they've developed. And they talk about leadership agility as a series of developmental stages. Um, and it's as and about the effectiveness being on levels of interpersonal and team and organizational. And their, their research is very extensive and it's very complex, um, but it, it, it's, it's worth a read it, it, for a um, overall approach to leadership in general. Um, but what they did create was a model that they called the leadership agility compass. And it talks about four types of agility, which you see here on this slide. Um, the ability ability to set context for the work that you're doing, um, the ability, ability to consider the other stakeholders that are involved in the situation, um, the ability to be to be creative and apply your creativity and self-leadership. And you know, kind of coming back to that theme of what's going on inside your own head and how you're managing your thoughts, your mindset yourself, um, and how you're bringing feedback into the into the um, situation. We're not going to totally dissect that, um, but we see similar themes that came up in the McKinsey research, self-awareness, emotional intelligence, humility, mindfulness, intention, learning and growth and um, mindset. Um, and all of this put together um, really helped us shape, all right, this is this is what we think this is because we wanted something to be practical, actionable, and reasonable for our learners. And in fact, um, Jim Highsmith, who was one of the architects of the agile software development methodology that I'm sure we're all familiar with, um, he also emphasized the role of mindset and what it takes to really operate successfully in this type of environment, environment that agility is principally about mindset and not practices. And we talk about um, agility. Um, we were, Steve and I were speaking earlier about there's big A agility, which agile um, processes like Highsmith advocated, but then there's also the, the little A agility and um, what it just means for individuals and, and how they're working through things themselves. And that's what we wanted to emphasize here. 
So, you know, we wanted to help organizations be more agile, not just accept change, tolerate change, um, not be noisy about it, but truly be more nimble and agile. And one of the things that we found then in this research is that a lot of it was about traits of people and concepts that happen. And when they study somebody who is just naturally good at this, what happens? But we didn't see a model that you can teach somebody who's not naturally gifted at that to raise their awareness about it. So out of all of that research that Terry just mentioned, what we created is an approach around four basic takeaways. Um, one is that agility, and this might be, maybe, uh, hopefully this is somewhat new to you. It really is an inside approach. The idea of agility from a process point of view, we're gonna teach you this methodology. We do this on Mondays, every other Fridays we stand up that doesn't move the needle from what we learned on the research. This is about inside a person and their ability to be comfortable with ambiguity and what they do during those times. The second is much of this is about a person's groundedness, their own mindset, their definition of growth and how curious they are about a situation. Those are the underpinnings of somebody behaving in a different and curious way during times of um, stress, uncertainty, conflict, um, so they don't just go into this sort of bunker mentality. The third is this notion about sort of zooming in and zooming out, that leaders can look at a specific situation and zoom in and be real tactical, but they also know how to zoom out and look at the big picture about how does this fit in to the long-term landscape of why I work here, what we're trying to do, not this moment in this minute, yikes, I got to do something to feel better. It's, it's about zooming in and zooming out. And then last, it's about being, re, about reacting to situations versus responding. And we're going to unpack that as well. So with the idea of all of that research created these four main takeaways, we're now going to walk you through the leadership agility model that we created. And we've turned this model into the ebook that we're going to share with you, as well as a half day training course so that leaders can better understand when I say agility from a leadership point of view, what does that mean? Great. Um, so let's start with our the first part of our model. Um, as I mentioned, we wanted to put together something that was practical, actionable, and something that described leadership agility, um, not just as a quality or a competence, um, but as an approach with key steps and elements, including mindset, um, something that moves leaders forward in changeable and uncertain circumstances. So the first step of our model is knowing your purpose within your team and your organization and understanding yourself. So this is about grounding yourself in what needs to be accomplished and the parameters that guide your projects or initiatives and knowing your role, your goals um, within the context of that, as well as your tendencies, your strengths and your challenges. So the middle section of the model is about what happens when you're faced with a situation that will call on your leadership agility um, to drive a favorable outcome. So this involves checking your mindset that you bring to your situation. This is an in the moment analysis um, that considers whether your mindset aligns with the achievement of the effective outcome that you're, look, that you're working towards and whether that benefits you and the initiative and the organization going forward. And if it doesn't, if that mindset isn't where it needs to be, you're, you're gonna need a reset and this is, about returning to that purpose and to yourself um, to help inform that mindset shift before you can move forward. So once your mindset is where you, where you want it to be or it's going to support where you wanna go, you can then respond to the situation in a way that's thoughtful, um, intentional, deliberate, um, um, with equanimity, and it's compatible with a positive result. Um, and then returning what to what you know about your purpose and yourself can inform this mindset shift before you take that action. 
but then the process isn't done. You have some sort of outcome that happens, but, but we still have another piece of that process, which is a, a, a step for engaging in reflection on the lessons you learned, how things went, what the experience was like, and about not just the process, but your own behavior to facilitate whatever that outcome turned out to be. And we're going to spend and then some the time going deeper into each of these as well right now. We've kind of given you the overview of how does one think and react to the world from situations and then themselves through this process. And then if you're like, gee, I didn't get this, bear with us. We're going to get a little bit deeper. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thanks, Steve. Um, and that brings us to the last part of this process, which is that arrow along the bottom, about being growth oriented, that reflection that is going to inform what you know about yourself, what you know about your purpose, and the cycle goes through again. So it 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 um is it feeds itself as it develops. And um, from one of the research articles that um that or one of the research um, sources that we utilized had this really cool quote in here about um a good analogy for leadership agility and that it's not about flapping your wings if you're an eagle flapping your wings harder against the um against the forces against you it's about learning to soar with them and um, when you encounter that turbulence you become more still and knowing that you have the agility and the self-possession um to keep soaring and i uh, we just thought that was a really nice analysis of um ideally how leadership agility plays out so as Steve mentioned, this is our chance to now go deeper into that model. And I just want to comment too, I really love this analogy of the bird in flight too, because it really speaks to the notion of using that tension, right? That, 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 um, that wind force to create a better situation that's easier versus this idea of flapping the wings. And I think when we think about um, leaders that are just trying to, um, maybe use a change management model or use some behaviors, but they really don't have that mindset of just like, I need to just ride this wave and be comfortable with the constant changes that are going on. That's the breakthrough thinking we want from leaders as we help develop them is that they are comfortable just sort of spreading their wings, taking the situation. And that begins as we go, if we go into this in, at knowing yourself and being comfortable with who you are and how you fit into the organization. So here's the chance to go a little deeper into that model. And we're gonna talk about that first step, which is knowing your purpose. And, and although agile implies movement and flexibility and change, um, it's not an anything goes prospect. Um, and leadership agility really begins with being grounded. Um, and, uh, so in this, this first step, when we talk about being grounded in your purpose as a leader and the values and the aspirations and the boundaries um, that guide you. And it's, we're talking about leaders having a clear identity of who they inspire, aspire to be, um, what the organization needs them to be, what they want to accomplish. And that serves as, as sort of a guide um, or that North Star, uh, um, the why of, of your leadership. and. Um, and it it's, it's, takes, takes beyond the um, goals that you have as an organization and really personalizes those and makes them, makes them more permanent within you as, as a leader. Um, and this will help it, by considering this and really thinking this through to help a leader um, solidify their values and those guardrails for how they aspire to act and engage um, when, they, when times get difficult. So these are some of the questions that one can ask themselves when they're better understanding you know, what is my purpose here? One of the things that um, I know we see regularly is that a leader acts in a way that is about what their boss thinks and acts and maybe their idiosyncrasies or their personal views or, or you know, they're kind of pleasing that person versus better understanding, you know, what is the purpose of this company? You know, what, what do we serve? Um, what are our values here? And, and, and I want to be really comfortable as a leader knowing those things so that when something comes up that is of um, possible conflict or challenge, I can lean into it with a strong voice because I know what's important to, you know, what we value, not 
what somebody today in this meeting right now feels is important for me to say, for example. So before you get into that situation, what we've learned is it's really important to know, why am I here? You know, what was I paid to do? Um, not just today with the person around me that makes me, you know, that might, might make them feel good, but how do I become, create return for this organization and this business? And that's really kind of the under the water analogy part of the iceberg here that people may not do when they think about being a more of an agile leader. So this brings us to the second part of um, that first step, which is um, understanding yourself and um, self-awareness is absolutely critical to being agile. Um, when you know your personal tendencies and your strengths and your limitations, what stresses you out, what gives you energy, um, and what you aspire to individually, your goals, your boundaries, you're better able to manage your mindset and respond to situations um, positively um, when, when, when uh, situations that require you to, to act with agility. Um, when you're attempting to respond instead of react, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit, self-awareness is really a huge factor in moving you forward in a way that's thoughtful and deliberate. Um, which is which is going to move you towards the outcome you're looking for. Um, and this is an ongoing effort. Um, there's lots of tools and techniques that can help you gain some specific insights. Um, things like your personality, your work style, what drives you and what frustrates you. There's a lot of tools out there, but there's also um, other ways of doing it, like self-reflection, um, getting feedback from others, um, understanding what your performance re reviews are about. Um, and emotional intelligence is really a key component of self-awareness. And we're, we're talking about the ability to recognize and understand and manage, manage your emotions and to use this awareness to help you navigate the challenges that are coming your way and develop and maintain relationships with, with the people that you work with. I mean, it's really a key contributor to leadership agility um, because it enables leaders to, to harness their emotions and to act in a productive way when things are difficult. And I'm sure we've all been in situations where um, emotions have gotten the best, best of us or threatened to get the best of us in a, in a challenging situation in the workplace. I know it's happened to me. Um, so this is also where the role of mindset, which came up so much in the research that we did, we did really begins to come into play. And one way of thinking about mindset is in terms of fixed versus growth. And we talk about that in a lot of contexts. And we know that um, maintaining a growth mindset is essential to leadership agility, which is why it's directly in our, in our model. And that's about letting go of the limits of what you already know, um, stepping back to welcome new ideas. We talked about the zooming out and zooming in. Um, summary that we had previously, um, welcoming others' input, um, being open to learning new things, changing your mind. These are all aspects of uh, what a growth mindset is, is about in the workplace. And that's really a key component of a, an agile leader's success. And I know this topic of growth mindset, I know we've talked about it a few times on our webinar series. It's It's been um, Use I don't want to say overused in the last few years, but it's woven into many different you know, applications in culture and leadership development spaces. But as it relates to being um, an agile leader, you know, an important part about this is somebody's ability to, once they know themselves and they're grounded in having confidence in why I'm here and who I am and that humbleness, it gives them the ability to truly lean into and jump in with both feet on certain times, fast paced times. I don't know the answer to this, but I know if I jump in the water, I'm, I'm a strong enough swimmer that I'm going to get to the other side and I'm going to make this happen um, for the organization versus, hey, before I dip a toe in the water, I need to know every little thing about this and is it safe and I don't know and I'm not sure. We're trying to get somebody to embrace that, that, that um, in, the, in the comment, the sailing, surfing, or skiing analogy. Same idea, like I have enough understanding in myself and I'm grounded in what's around me that I can just, you know, you know, snap on those skis, go down that hill, and I know no matter what's around the next corner, I'm going to be able to respond to that. That's a great analogy. Um, 
so that brings us to um, to another part of the the part of the uh, model that's about checking your mindset. Um, and this is really the culmination of what we've talked about so far, the knowing your purpose and understanding yourself and emotional intelligence and, and being growth oriented. Um, this is the part of the model where something happens that puts all of that stuff into play. And it's important at this point to really check your mindset. And that's about assessing what is your attitude? What are your beliefs and what are your expectations of that situation? And does that align with all of that that you're bringing to it? Does that align with your purpose and, 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 and with what you know about yourself? And does it represent a growth orientation? Is it going to require you to really activate your emotional intelligence? Or are you being emotional, emotionally intelligent about that? And why is this step so important is really rooted in psychology. And we've all heard um, the simplification of the concept that our thoughts become our feelings and which become our actions. And those actions yield some sort of outcome that's utilized in, in so many um, cognitive behavioral context. Um, and it's the same that applies here. This is why checking your mindset is really so powerful um, and important because we may be inclined to act instinctively um, without any thought to our mindset. And if you're acting out of fear or anxiety or grandiosity or other unconstructed behaviors, um, you're less likely to be agile in a way that you need to be and more focused on maintaining the status quo and, and fighting against um, fighting against the the change and the uh, disruption that's happening. And you know, going back to that eagle analogy, um, you're flapping against against the, the forces that are coming at you. Um, but when there's a situation to deal with, or an action to be taken, or a decision to be made, mindset can be the difference between reacting and responding and between having a good or a bad outcome. And um, what do you do if your head isn't where it should be? Um, that's about taking a moment to step back, ground yourself, perhaps do some reflection. And that reset or that that time away, um, even if it's brief, can really give you the perspective you need to revisit the situation anew. Um, and this takes practice, it's not easy. Um, but the simple act of just taking that moment to check in and determine where your head is at and what your approach is going to be um, can really make a significant difference in your actions, decisions, and outcomes. Doesn't mean you're you're going to um, drag. Um, my son used to be a um, pitcher, and the, the his coaches always told him. Um, smooth, smooth as, uh, slow is smooth and smooth is fast in developing his mechanics. That you're looking for speed by being slow and smooth and deliberate will get you the speed and the efficiency and the accuracy you're looking for. And I just, I always come back to that analogy um, when we're discussing this. I know a lot of organizations over the last few years, I know a lot of the organizations we work with have spent a fair amount of time in this well-being resilience movement over the last couple of years, but really thinking about mm -hmm. mindset and well-being and resilience and understanding yourself from a stress management point of view mm -hmm. to deal with burnout. And I think you should think about that work and maybe repurpose if you've done some of that in the context of agility, because what we're trying to do here too is have somebody in the context of, am I really embracing this change and acting decisively and making innovative decisions, it starts with what's going on inside myself. You know, what story am I telling myself? How am I feeling? Am I, is my body itchy? Am I feeling nervous? Do I have a, you know, is my heart racing? Like that's part of this checking your mindset and having an, a time to say, hey, before I get into the next step of this, I got to go back as we saw in that model and reset about who I am, what's important here and get grounded so I can go kind of into the next step of this with um, better intentionality. So you think about mindset. I know we, we have a leadership mindset class. We have this kind of growth orientation program, but I, just like communication practices, right, are woven into many leadership classes or programs that you use. Mindset, I think, can be woven into different places and it's used a slightly different way here. 
Now, this is another quote from Jim Highsmith that we really liked. And um, certainly, um, it doesn't mean that process and methodology aren't important. Of, co of course, they are. And um, certainly, the agile software development process is um, anchored in specific processes and approaches to, to doing that work. And um, in any industry, we're going to have specific processes and methodologies that we need to follow. And I'm sure you do it all the time as you execute the, you execute your work. Um, however, the aspects of agility that we've discussed so far shape that attitude part of that quote. Um, and that was really what paves the way for enhancing the actions and decisions that are involved in getting the response that we're looking for. And I tease this a little bit. We're going to talk now about reacting versus responding. So we know that so much of leadership agility is about that contrast in reacting versus responding. And we've talked about a lot. Um, we're called on regularly to deal with situations and problems we've never seen before, um, as I mentioned previously. And this is where agility can really give a leader an, X, an edge um, because in responding, they're able to be thoughtful and purposeful and just when situations come up, instead of simply reacting to them. Um, you can see the contrast right on the slide. And because we know that a measured, thoughtful response is more likely to, to drive the results um, that, we're, that we're looking for. And it doesn't mean that everything's going to go the way we want it to. Um, and But it's still our job as leaders to put ourselves in the best possible position um, to achieve the best outcome that can be achieved. And effective leaders accept that as, as a challenge. And uh, really what we're talking about in our model is everything that comes before that response. We're talking, we're talking about everything that leads up to that response is really the crux of what we found leadership agility is about. As we were creating this model too, we realized that the word equanimity is a word we don't use every day. And we went back and forth, like, you know, could we make this a simpler model? A, a simpler model by using a different word. And at the end of the day, we're like, it really in, encompasses what we really think this is all about. You know, it's having a mental calmness. It's having a composure. It's having, you know, some even temperedness that is required to uh, be in the moment in a very different um, situation and way than you would otherwise. So I think we should use this word a little bit more often. Yes. What it means, I think, though, in practical terms, as we teach this, is going from um, automatic reaction, which was what many people do, and especially in moments of tension or fear, they go back to previous situations of like, why would I do that? Tell me about that. Where's the documentation? I need proof. Put it in writing. You know, all these things that you might think in terms of you know, short-centered, fear-based, yeah. emotional impulse response things to a more intentional response that says, this is what this requires. And I'm going into this with a thoughtful rationale, thinking about big picture, having self-control in my emotions, even in a tense situation. I'm going into this with true curiosity to learn and not think I have to get my way. It's really driving the, hey, the world's always going to change and we have to change with it. And that's part of my role here. When we get to this step in this process, if somebody's understood themselves and the work that they do, they come into this with the right mindset and they're um, coming in with equanimity, they're going to respond in a much healthier way. And that's what this is really all about. And if each individual leader does that, and then teams collectively get together to do that, the organization will therefore then make better choices and be a more agile organization. So this brings us to the end of the model. Um, and we've achieved some sort of outcome, um, but that's, that's not the end. There's one more step, which is... Um, getting into a practice that essentially is rewiring us um, to, to as agile leaders. And this is a, an idea of reflection. And um, hopefully we achieved the outcome we wanted, maybe we didn't, um, but, and hopefully it aligns with, with all of the work that we did at the beginning about our values and knowing ourselves. Um, but regardless, 
that theme of that that idea of being growth oriented is 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 paramount at this point. Um, it's an opportunity to identify lessons learned from the experience. Um, what are you going to take away that you can apply to increase your effect as a, effectiveness as a leader? What did you learn about yourself? How did your self awareness grow? Um, and agile leaders recognize that their development is ongoing. Um, I always say to my kids, be a learn it all, not a know it all. And um, they know that leaders know that they can get better. They will always learn. They will always grow. And um, this cons includes considering the impact that that response had on others, on your relationships, on your colleagues and other stakeholders and on that work, that work environment. It's really a, a holistic view of that experience. Um, and you can also get the feedback from get feedback from others, actively cultivate that feedback um, and get the perspective of others to really create that big picture um, of, of what this experience was like. And similar to what we see in the resilience space and what we know as we do a lot of leadership coaching and the work that we do is to create new habits, to create new mindsets, to really rewire your brain. It requires you to reflect on a situation so that you can understand, you know, that, yeah, you know, behaving that way didn't kill me. It wasn't as scary as I thought. And I have the confidence to do it maybe even a little bit more next time. And so these are some of the questions that you can ask yourself when you're at the end of this to really sharpen it, not be like, okay, I got through that. Thank God that's over. I'll never have to do that again. No, this is about I need to be ready to be that person that's regularly the eagle that can just jump off and fly. And so consider these questions as you reflect on it. And at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of organizationally, what can you do? And I think building in some reflection practices into your programs is a really helpful way to go as well. And we had a, co a, a comment in chat previously about how um, the inside out approach that we're talking about here is really, really, is really difficult. And it is. And, um, and uh, I wanted to acknowledge that, that it's, it's not easy. It's, it's not easy stuff that we're talking about here, um, but it's worthwhile. We wanted to pause here and get a little bit more feedback from you as well. We're going to have two poll questions here. I just wanted to get a sense of where you guys are each at. And then we're Kind of going to open up a little bit of, of, of dialogue in the chat and then close with some organizational um, ideas here. So the first one really is, as you think about leaders in your organization, um, to what extent do leaders do you think today in your organization exhibit leadership agility? We're really curious about this um, to see what we think um, is the starting point for organizations. So I want to leave this open for just a couple of more seconds and uh, and we went from a five meaning high, like they, you know, you see it exhibited all the time to one, I, I really don't see any of these agility practices that you've, you know, shared with us today across the organization. And the poll. So 79% say sometimes. Um, uh, good news is um, only one organization uh, said not at all, but uh, very few organizations um, are doing this regularly, 18% of the time. So, okay. So there's a little bit of understanding. I, I'd like to think that, uh, you know, COVID itself and the pandemic and kind of how we've had to just react and respond differently has opened up people's point of view. Are we doing it in a healthy way? I'm not so sure. The next question takes it, I think, one level deeper. So the second one I'd like to ask your input on is from an organizational perspective, how well does your culture of your organization support leadership agility? It's one thing to say, you know, individual leaders, I can see it from here from time to time. But um, let's, um, we're opening up that poll too. So how well does your culture do it? From a five is very well, um, three is sometimes, and one is not at all. Okay. 
And let's see. You know what? It tracks very similar. Uh, exact percentages here. So um, about, well, pretty close. 76% are sometimes. So, so you're seeing it sometimes in your organization. 18%, um, um, you do it regularly. And I think there's some opportunity then for organization. So hopefully uh, some of these tools and ideas from this model, and let me put the model back up again, um, will uh, give you some perspective here. Um, we want, we left yeah. about, we have 10 minutes left. We got a couple of closing up things. So we have about eight minutes here. I wanted to walk through a summary here, but while I'm going through that summary, we'd love to field any other questions that you may have. So feel free to use the chat and share any questions uh, for Terry or I, and we would happily talk through that with you. But what I wanted to share is as you think about leadership, you know, what, what um, agile, uh, leaders are doing, they're grounded, you know, again, in the company purpose and goals. So hopefully that piece wasn't lost on you. And I think that might seem simple and easy to say. And also, you might say, you know, our organization regularly talks about our values or our performance management system shares these things. But a person regularly thinking about and what we found in in teaching this new training course is having them apply it regularly and go, what does this mean for me in my job today with the people around me? Am I really not, it's not do I understand it. The word we bolded here is I'm grounded in it. Am I really grounded in what we do here? Because that gives me the ability and the confidence to move forward. So I wanted to kind of highlight that to make sure it wasn't lost in this work. Um, I think there are two comments in the in the chat. One about um, the applicability of this to healthcare, where there is things are very documented and process oriented, and and there's not a whole lot of necessarily wiggle room for that. And it was interesting. There was a comment right after it about kind of the opposite of that, where a, a, an organization being so agile that and willing to shift and kind of go with go with the wind that that things aren't aligned and. Um, it's interesting that those came back to back because um, it, it it makes me think of two things, um, sort of like the happy medium there, but also um, it makes me think of going back to that idea of the in, inside out. And Steve mentioned resilience, mentioned dealing with amb ambiguity, all of these topics that are all kind of tangential and related to this. And it makes me think of, okay, so the, the environment and the circumstances are what they are. What am, what am I doing as a leader to navigate that to get the outcomes that I need in my piece of the business, for lack of a better term, and for, and for what I'm, I'm working on? But I think those, those are really good, good um, contrasts right there to say, okay, how can we take this? I don't know if it's anything we can answer right now, but it's like, all right, how does, how does this idea and this concept apply to the specific circumstances that I and my my leaders are dealing with every single day. Well, and I think what that that th those comments speak to uh, as well is the need for a senior team to align on what does this mean for them. You know, for a VP of IT to bring in agile methodology, say we're going to run processes like this, but nobody in the organization really understands what it means to make decisions quicker. It, it's it you know you're going to get a lot of uh, a noise in that and not get the results that you want. So if you worked a model like this, an organization to sit down and say, what is our collective mindset as a team about this? You know, are, if we respond with equanimity um, and we're responding versus reacting, we should be talking about how quick do we want to go as an organization? You know, do we want to just jump off the deep end of this and not know where we're going? What does that look like? So I think having some formal discussion as an organization about, Given the market we're in, what we do, where we serve, how um, nimble do we need to be and align that down and across the organization? So just the notion of talking about agility. I know many of the organizations we work with have been talking about change management for a long while, but that's just about somebody who's wanting to get somebody else to adopt what you're selling usually. And this is about how do we want to, you know, create an ecosystem that says we want to be evolving and different regularly and all the time. And I appreciate the notion of let's not let that speed up so fast 
that we can't keep up with it, that there needs to be a balance to what does agility mean for, for us. The other thing that we wanted to share is that, as Terry mentioned earlier, you know, this is a, a meta competency as we saw it. So our view on this has been, and as we work with high potential leadership groups or organizations where they're trying to change their culture through their leadership development programs, is we've created this model and this content is an overarching program, almost like when you think about like performance management, there's a kind of a training on, okay, you're a first level leader. What, what does it mean to manage somebody's performance? But within there, there's skills. How do I give feedback? How do I hold people accountable? How do I do recognition? In this space, we've created this leadership agility course or framework that helps people understand, gee, I didn't even, I really wasn't even thinking about this concept of what does it mean to be an eagle in this regard? But these are the other courses underneath those that we think people need to actually exhibit these agile behaviors on a day-to-day -day basis. And the way you, which you could start with this in your organization, we always like to leave some kind of leaf behind here. You know, one is train your leaders in this, whether it's getting your senior team together, your directors, your VPs, but bring people together to build awareness and skill about what agility is and isn't, you know, our ebook could be a good starter with that. The McKenzie white paper is, I think, a great one. Then from there, ensure that your company goals, values, um, and all that are, are communicated clearly and are built into the vernacular of your organization. And, and even if you've communicated them, we would say there's a great um, opportunity to, in a training, to have people play with those themselves and get dirty with them and what that means for them and their work and who they are, because that will enable them to lead in a more agile way. And then encourage, you know, more safety for leaders and experiments, you know, be vocal about that in the way you set up work programs, the way you manage performance, you know, asking people to, you know, have challenging questions, take risks, admit mistakes. It really starts with senior leaders role modeling this behavior. If they come in and say, you know, where they're at with these items, for example, and they're asking people about their mindset and their equanimity and are you taking time to think about this and what should we do differently <laughs> and saying i'll lead with that and i'll go you know it, it will create um practices and the other practice we think you should create is reflective practices so at the end of projects or programs or in staff meetings to really take time to reflect on something how did that go we said we were going to do this thing differently we launched it what happened how'd you feel how'd you think did we make good decisions? Were we innovative? Did we go fast enough? What could have happened? Like build in time to talk about it, using that model even to make it a safe way to have those conversations so it doesn't feel like something that's hokey because it really isn't hokey. It's about how people make fundamental change. We know that in the individual coaching world time and time again. Weave these into your team development efforts too. Do this with senior teams because decisions are made usually in team environments. So if those individuals are individually agile, great, but how does it show up in a team concept? And then last, coach and mentor leaders to have these agility practices. So we think those are some ways that you could get started with this work. We have, um, a John had some, made some really good points in chat about, okay, um, what about accountability? What about um, metrics? What about um, um, really the, the nuts and bolts of, um, the work getting done. And absolutely, that's critical, you know, certainly, you know, this kumbaya type, you know, approach and and, and isn't, it, it needs to be married with the tactical and the execution component of the work that needs to be done. And, and you make really good points about communicating goals, holding people responsible, having good plans, um, et cetera. And, 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 and so it's about combining those two things are our traditional view of what it means to be a leader and that kind of uh, ac execution component, alignment and execution component with um, with this overarching um, approach of being able to step back, take a moment, think things through. And um, I think uh, um, you make a really, really good point in pointing that out. Well, and if you pair the leadership uh, agility with 
sort of process agility, I think you can have power in that. Because if you use the agile methodology from a yes. process perspective, you'll be saying, we're going to have this done by this sprint or, you know, by this point in time with this project. So it's creating these audacious goals to say, we need to implement this new thing by pick a date. And this is what it looks like. And it's embedding the leadership behaviors that enable or support that. So there's a comment about maybe implementation should be a next webinar. Um, we will take that under advisement. We do have our next one up, which is on the screen here as well. I wanted to let you know that we're going to have a host. I'm super excited to, to bring somebody who's been talking about uh, a new leadership uh, imperative around being grounded and conscious in their leadership style and approach. So it's another kind of puzzle piece into this work that we're talking about, not from an agility point of view, but... Uh, Bob Rosen um, has been studying this for 30 plus years, has a whole bunch of books. We partnered with Bob and we're going to have Bob on, on, on our program here to talk about what does it mean to truly be grounded as a leader and be conscious, which I think can support the work that we're talking about here. And then last, if you are coming to Michigan Sherm, if you happen to be in the Michigan area, um, I will be presenting with Charity Bennett, who is a VP of transformation there about team development and the work that we've done with Health Alliance plans are a large um, health care insurance company, and we spent a lot of time in executive team development over the last three years, and we're going to tell that story. So I want to make sure that if, if you are thinking about going, um, please come Michigan Insurance Great. And if you are coming, please note that our session is on October 19th at the 930 breakout. Um, thank you so much. We are at the top of the hour welcoming your yeah. thoughts and ideas. We will be sending out this material, a replay of the webinar, the full ebook. Feel free to share that. And if you'd like to talk more about this topic or any leadership or OD uh, coaching team topic, uh, we'd love to, to chat with you more. And thanks, Terry, for your time today. This was fun. Thanks, everybody.